that just wants us you know to start off on um who is ole to um if i was to do it i wouldn't be the best at sharing just a little introduction about who you are um and then we'll go to maybe just where you grew up as well before we go into the career stuff you know uh we just want to get to know you a bit more try not to hurt you yo okay um I don't even know where to start like what is that is a view question in the beginning that's always irritating <laughs> It's like I'm trying to gauge what do you want to hear actually like what do you want me to say okay all of to work in medical student I'll start there because this, this is also about a medicine I'm currently live in Tigerberg uh a campus in I should this be in English actually like cuz I, I don't think everyone is Yes yes okay um, a 24 year old medical student studying fourth year at Stellenbosch University um I'm from around born and raised here I am very much involved in campus but not this year that much because of covid and everything but um I like uh youth I like working with the youth a lot so I do missions where we go and we help tutor in rural kids at in even like in western cape i do like people from my school as well so i like tutoring because i actually love maths and physics and um oh, i'm a christian that is the most important part most important thing about me that lord um yes um yeah i'm still discovering i i, I do have a passion for medicine but i'm still there's still time there like wow i feel very tried right now but Then there are times when I'm like, oh my gosh, everything is so well. So, obviously, um, oh, I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> Important fact. <laughs> Not married yet. Wow. Well. All right. Yeah. So, um, where did you grow up? Just a little bit about you know before we get into high school life. Like, where did you grow up? um we you know we're from around the western cape um how was that experience in terms of um growing up and just um the family as well okay so growing up I was held raised by a single mom the um father left us when i was still a year old passed away i i grew up for the first 12 years in philippi which is a township but mostly informal settlements and then we moved to Mfulen in 2010 and that's where I was in high school and so we still we still live and so we live in currently even though I'm now like not at home the whole time um but obviously like I grew up even though child, there was a lot of kids at home a lot of uh cousins and everything um growing I don't know what what I don't think there's much to say about growing up in the town cuz I mean obviously you know there's violence there's a lot of things that could influence you uh if you're not like very sure or very stern or very clear about where you want to be so that you could easily get distracted which you know like I've been, I was always very curious always wanted to get involved in things so like I was kind of like everyone was in the debate society tried to oh my gosh do athletics even though I was so bad at it so I was always busy with like extracurricular yeah. activity yeah no i understand it helps with the with the balance of everything now as well okay yeah. as you've led us into high school life and everything like that um what were you most known for in high school like what was your thing oh my gosh <laughs> i was that that did everything okay <laughs> now i'm going to feel shy now you're going to make me shy but i was captain of our swimming team i was in the debate society i was uh in leadership there were so many things that i did i was also in the school choir so i was that kid who did everything yeah i can relate story i relate where you are <laughs> all right um then the next question is did you ever study or um you scammed your way through high school did we all i think we all feel like that <laughs> i feel like high school was very nice it was mm. like 
you could still like study two days before an exam and still get an 80 percent it's not the same in university yeah so but for me if i'm being honest um my friends played a very big part in me like getting good grades because i had this group of friends that would like hey, let's go uh study like study group whatever whatever even though i did study i was still like procrastinate a lot so like when i had people being like today we're studying so i was like oh okay fine and then like that would make like passing so much easy yeah okay because okay. you know there's that perception when you think what's see you smart you think no i'm very smart i can do this and obviously you are smart like if you're not putting the work in it so their grades yeah. will also all right and then next question is where did you envision yourself in the future what did you see yourself doing so from that high school person to where now did you envision where you are not at all not at all serious okay so in high school i did not want to study medicine i did not think of, i've never thought of studying medicine at all if i'm honest until after high school like mm. like grade 12 december then i was like oh my goodness actually and like you know it's already made you did not apply in time and everything like that. So I really thought I was going to be a chemical engineer, maybe from grade eight, actually. So I was like, I want to be an engineer, chemical engineer. Yeah, I can't. Grade 10, I love chemistry. I was so good in chemistry and physics. Same thing, 11 and 12. And then I... So my story, getting to medical school, I just like one night it was just such a random night I just was sleepless and I was like okay why am I struggling to fall asleep because I fall asleep very easy so in this day just like something told me to go and just google gas skills in South Africa and I found that there's like a shortage of pediatricians in South Africa and that just really like pulled on my heart I was like no actually like yeah it's so something needs to be done about this and I love kids so I was like actually why not I was like you know actually maybe because i could love being a ch- children's doctor i don't know about like normal like yeah. everyone else and then uh, so when i went to get my results in jan from this our school like my trip results my principal i gave him my results like go apply for medicine at still and bosch wow. so i was like what so that was like <laughs> confirmed everything yes oh that's such a like, like an... wow like you needed the, the whole, everything just adding together and getting that confirmation to solidify everything. That is yeah. so perfect. All right. And then um, in terms of starting into going into university, um, do you think that just getting like good grades is like getting is good for people who would like to enter medicine from high school? Okay, so currently, you know, when I was, for medical school they wanted you to be involved in like extracurricular activities and stuff like that but now it's just your marks it's just your results and your nbts that's how you get in so good grades are very important. very important okay and so the other stuff in terms of like high school community service and all of that you don't think that they influence anything or should they consider that as well currently it doesn't uh, your acceptance but it's still good because we still are going to be leaders in society like doctors are supposed to be leaders in society whether you like it or not there's some child looking up to you whether you like it or not you're a senior to the interns or to the medical students so you'll always be in a leadership position yeah. hence leadership is important if not the most important thing and i mean being in sports also helps build character competition the medical school is very competitive so yeah. getting that we just both character wow okay um and then um you are one of uh, our former schemata students um i was with you during the year <laughs> um but then can you just tell us a bit more about how you got into schemata and sort of why did you make that decision to first go into schemata before going into medicine university straight okay so the story where the principal gave me my results which was like go up like medicine and still in bosch so now i'm like maybe they do take you for jazz let me go try my life oh i also was like do you she's like yes you do just go and i'm like oh okay got home and i told them good 
I want to go to Stellenbosch to um actually like see if I can get in in Jan. It doesn't happen, but I didn't know. So I got to Stellenbosch. I'm admin A, and it was like, hi. Um, I want to know if they accept walk-ins. <laughs> And they're like, oh, sorry, no, we don't. They apply for next year. Applications are going to open in April. So I don't know what is the meaning of this. Like, and then um, and then I, that was that all that I got from that day. And I went back home. And then my grandma is like, No, you're gonna go again tomorrow. So I was like, oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> change anything. And she's like, No, you're going again tomorrow. So, okay, I got ready again and I left and I went to Stellenbosch and I got there, same office, same person, <laughs> like in the admin building, same guy. But now today there were like, like posters everywhere saying no walk-ins accepted. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, do I even go talk to this guy? Because oh. I mean, I'm only, my grandma said I should come. And you know, I'm like, you know what? There's, I, I'm yeah, my result goes. So I go to the same guy again, and he tells me the same thing again. But now, like, I'm now crying. He didn't, he didn't like, remember you. <laughs> he did, but he didn't remember me. Okay. Now I'm walking out, like, almost in tears. And then one person, one lady was like, go to Adin Yelsi. There's some, she told me some woman's name that I need to talk to. She was going to give me advice. So now I'm walking. She's like some white woman, whatever, describes the woman. Like, and I walk, I'm like, there's so many blonde, white people in Stellenbosch. So, like, and I even forgot the name. I just told her to come right and getting in my story. And she told me uh, to go back to the building and ask to speak to Miss Sanda Janssen. Mm -hmm. So, I went back, asked for Miss Sanda, and then they told me where her office was. And she actually told me about Skimmer. She gave me the form and told me to apply for schematics. Like, there's nothing we can do for you right now, but maybe apply for schematics while you wait for the applications to open in April, then you're actually doing something. Wow. It's like, oh, okay. it's like, we can also get to improve your marks, even though you qualify. Like, qualifying doesn't mean you're going to get in. You can still do better. I was like, okay, great. Then that's how I applied for schematics and I actually got in. <laughs> Okay. Um, in terms, I think the, the students will ask questions for schematics. You guys want to know about schematics as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at them. That's why I'm, I'm trying to get an indication. Um, how? They yes, they can see you. You're in, like, there's a screen. <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, watching a whole screen. The side, this is no new and natural as well. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, what advice would you give students who are currently in Schematis um, now and would like to go into medicine? Like, what advice would you give them on how to do improving their marks and you know, give them some tips in terms of like what you did when you were in Schematis as well? Sure. Okay. First of all, listen to Dr. Lawrence. Like, <laughs> Yeah. She gives the study advice. And she tells you, today you study, tomorrow you start with what you did yesterday. On day three, you start with what you did day one, day two, and then get into day three as well. That is the most important. Like even now, that helps a lot when I study using that method, even though I don't do it all the time because there's a lot of work to get through. But it actually really helps a lot. And um, you know what? Go for medicine, like apply for it. And uh, I mean, applications are closed now but if you because i know someone who applied for physiotherapy and it was because he was scared he was not going to get in and at the end of the day if you have something else which is not medicine hoping that you can change courses while you're here they don't ask that so if you apply for anything health related you here you won't be able to change even first year medicine again you must actually finish your course before you can do anything else studying obviously like there's a center for student counseling. They also have free educational psychologists. If you feel like your study methods are not, you're putting in the hours, you're putting in the work, but the results are not what you expected or they not equal to the amount of work that you've put in, go to the CSC, do you know? Yeah, SSC. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go there, make an appointment, you'll get an educational psychologist for free. They will help you discover what works for you like what would help you get better results what study methods should you be so that is also very important 
and just put in the hours. I put in the work. Okay. Did did skim, being in schematics help you in terms of university? You see a different different squad who were people who are not in um, schematics compared to just coming from high school. Um, I I think so. It's also a tricky question because I um I don't come from middle C schools, no. So here, when you come to Stellenbosch Medical Campus or even main campus, you'll find a lot of people. Schematics does to people who didn't go to these model C schools. What model C, model C schools did to those people, like it prepares you for university. If you don't, you are not very exposed. If you're not coming from, I don't know, hair shell girls or whatever, it kind of like puts you in the same wavelength or in the same category as them in a way because uh you'll still come here and you'll still see there's a like a vast difference between you and these people these people had resources their entire lives they were they had, like private tutors these people know what works for them they have all the support that they need and you realize that actually you didn't have just you didn't have as much but actually schematics does like help it's an advantage it, it is an advantage compared to people who are from the same or similar backgrounds, we didn't go through schematics, we are at more advantage. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay, that's that's good to know for them as well. Um, do you have any questions from the floor before I go forth? Which you that Do you want to come sit and ask so she can hear you? We have a student with a question. <laughs> okay. Hello. Oh. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, you mentioned that being in medical school is quite competitive. What did you mean by that? Ooh, okay. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, leadership is competitive if you want to be in leadership. Like, do, it, it's not as, um, leadership is competitive. Sports, I've seen people play netball and I'm like, oh, why are people so intense? Like literally everything because people are used to being, you compete for marks, obviously. There's, everyone wants to be in the Golden Key Society and you know, like they take 15, the top 15%. So mm -hmm. like studying, if you want to be 15%, there's a lot of studying. You basically need to put a whole of hours into studying. And even sports, obviously sports is very competitive. Like by nature, people who come to medical school, people who are competitive, whether it's getting good marks, whether it's being the best at the sport that they're playing, whether it's being the best uh, in singing or playing instruments, just everything, yeah, it can get very hectic. So how do you so, keep the balance then between all the competitiveness and just also being level-headed with your studies and stuff? You just need to know yourself. You need to work. I mean, also, other people are competitive, and they that's what's important to them to be in the top 15%. What's important to them is to get 90s and 80s, nothing below that. But uh, I personally, that's that's not me. That's not what I want. I want to know my work. I'm not very bothered by being the top here, but also just want to, I'm like, we also need to know that for me personally being here already, it's like, I don't need to prove that I'm smart. I don't know if that makes sense. A lot of people yeah. want to prove that they're smart. By you essentially being at Stellenbosch, by you being at the medical campus, you're already smart. And nobody's not smart. No one who's here is dumb. So the, 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 like the playing ground is already here. So you are already that. Just knowing that you, but also if um, people have different reasons. For some people it's funding. Maybe they're getting fun because uh, Golden Key Society actually pays like half the tuition. So maybe some people need that. But I personally want to be okay. Like there are people who struggle a lot. I mean, a lot of people do struggle with uh, mental illness because every, all other aspects of their lives are neglected. They neglect their spirituality, social life. They don't have friends. All they have is just academics. So I would not put that much pressure on myself. I would not like ignore my I'm very social I like being with people so when I isolate myself for too long it starts stirring I'm not okay all of a sudden I'm I just have anxiety I'm not you see so balancing is very important and also when you struggle with balance you can still ask for help one thing there are mentors here yeah, when you come here if you get into for medicine you'll get a mentor uh, for academics you'll get a 
Oh, a mentor is more for your emotional well-being, actually, for your social life. So there's already like people in place to help you. If you're not coping with academics, there are tutors which you will get for free. So there are all these things. There are a lot of societies as well to also get to socialize a bit. So just get getting control. If you're not, if you're struggling to balance your academic life and your spirituality, you can still be like, okay, hi, can I have like one session where I get help? Where I, how can balance my life? And you actually have sessions uh, mostly with educational psychologists if you're struggling with balancing your life until you find or even a mentor they can tell you how they're actually balancing their life i personally work with like just having a timetable and just say okay this time i need to do this and this and this and that's how my day is going to be for this week just putting on different things that's what works for me if i don't have that then i find myself at 12 p.m and i haven't done anything because i didn't put my life in a timetable i mean it doesn't work for everyone but that's how it works for me Okay. Um, also, I remember I went job shadowing it uh, with doctors at a hospital. And then when I got there, it was all fun and games until like they started injecting this woman and then I almost fainted. So is that like on its own? Because obviously as a doctor, you're going to have to do such things, going to be in such situations. Is that a sign on its own that you shouldn't do medicine? Like it's not for you? Or is there a way to... No, I had a friend faint three times when she saw blood uh, like three times in three different days and she used to it now she's fine she just and someone collapsed in theater this it's okay like it happens when you're not used to it and then after some time you're fine <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> and then over time you get used to it <laughs> okay thank you i also had a question about like the work itself like because i know wait the first year well the first three years what do you guys actually do is it like math and physics is it like biology what what, what is done so you're never doing that basically from this year on and you'll only do basically biology I don't know it's the system the body systems what you do is um oh so in first year you do life forms and functions which it means just like life forms and functions how your lungs work how uh yeah I feel like the name already explains itself but also in then um you do pharmacology as well, second semester. Second semester, first year is more of what we actually do. We do um, pharmacology. We also do... Uh, pathology, of, but it's, it's still a light version. And then in second year, then you start doing the systems. You do cardio, you do cardiology, which is the heart, everything that has to do with blood, and heart and veins and then you do um respiratory system that has to do with the lungs obviously the breathing and everything all the diseases that have to do with that how it functions normally and how you treat the diseases that uh, affect the lungs and then you do gastro like gastrointestinal systems which is from the mouth so that your mouth, the chewing, everything, the diseases that have to do with all of that. That's first semester. Second semester, we do uh, repro, which is basically pregnancy like reproduction. And we also do urology, which is urology, the genitals. And we do endocrine, which is mostly um, hormones. You know, hormones have a lot of effects in a human body so you do that and i think that's all we do in second semester i don't think i'm missing anything no and then in third year that's what um theory models with clinical rotations so you have one month in hospital one month theory one month hospital one month theory theory just means that you go to class you go to the lecture halls but currently because of covid people are just having the 
uh, Teams meetings or on their uh, laptops at home. Yeah. And then from fourth year onwards. Yeah, fourth year as well. It's one month theory, one month hospital, one month theory. That's also fourth year. And then fifth year, halfway, like in June, you're done with uh, theory. It's just like hospital from halfway through fifth year until you finish medical school. That's when you're called a student intern. So it's just an intense study of the body for the full first three years. And then, and then it's just, okay, cool. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Okay, so um, after upgrading, um, did you apply to other universities? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. For medicine? I didn't apply. For, I only applied for medicine at Stellenbosch because I still believed I'm supposed to do medicine at Stellenbosch. So I was like, if I don't get in for medicine, then I'm going to do what I wanted to do. I applied for engineering in other universities and I did get in for engineering. But Stellenbosch also accepted me for medicine and I feel like, okay, this is also a sign. I should just go ahead. So well, in first year, what did you guys do? You mean the modules? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, chemistry uh, for six months, we did life forms and functions. It was basically just life forms, how the body functions. So just like a little bit of introduction into what we were going to be doing at medical school, starting with um, embryology. Um, you know, embryology, like embryo, baby, stomach, yeah, yeah. and sorry, and uh, so that that, and then we also did um, other things like uh, PPD, which is pers personal and professional development, which is basically like uh, the literature that you guys are doing. I think you're doing academic lit. Yeah. So PPD is basically like academic lit academic literature and then we also uh, did one module where we went into the community just so that we could understand patients better so we'd like go, go see how people live and basically you need to understand why people don't put an appointment so you can consider because maybe people are not just being lazy people actually don't have money people don't know can't actually get to hospital or to the clinics and then in second semester we did human pathology uh, we did pathology, which is basically uh, how people get sick, like what causes people to get sick, the bacteria. We learned the bacteria. We also learned about snakes, like snakes bites, how they treat it, how do they affect the body and other insects that make people sick. And then we also learned about pharmacology, uh, how to treat all these infections or all these um, diseases. Okay, so did academic lead and computer lead help you during your university years? What helped? Yeah, and computer lit. Academic lit did help me with uh, writing essays because even now we still are expected to do research. So I have a background on how to do research that is expected, what's good. So I always get good marks for research. And that's why it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, computer lit, I, I'd be lying if I'm honest. I. <laughs> <laughs> it has, apart from knowing how to go on your laptop and look into the, the university, you don't need much. You don't need much on computer lit. Unless you want to work part time doing something that is connected to that. Otherwise, no, it has not helped me. Okay. So, um, from um, interest, you can get a job, like a side job, while doing medicine. Yes, you can. Thank you. I'm done. Bye. Bye. Oh, do they have a question? Okay. You don't have questions.
Okay, I'm just going to carry on with a few questions, if that's okay with you. <laughs> and then okay. I think we'll see as we go if they have more questions or not. Um, mm -hmm. So I think you touched on, on your daily routines and your um, timetable in terms of, of what you do. Um, obviously, it looks different now because of COVID, but prior to COVID, how maybe did your daily routine you know, um, just for them, because hopefully this COVID thing is done in the next <laughs> in the next year when they get back. So, how does a day in the life of all the it look like? Oh my gosh, it's so different. I mean that, like for real. Yeah. Um. What was the last rotation I was on? It was surgery. Yes, it was surgery. So it depends on what I'm on, like what rotation in hospital, what am I on? So with surgery, we had to be at hospital at six. So that one is the most active. But otherwise, apart from that, okay. So I actually enjoyed surgery a lot, if I'm honest. You did a lot. It's, it's very cool. Everything that happens there to me personally is cool. But also being in surgery, you end up being there for like eight hours like without a break so that's also it can get a quite it can get a bit hectic yeah so you have to be that sick and go to oh, <laughs> the doctors are there at six so i needed to be there like at least quarter to see my patient before the doctors get there because when they get there they want to know how the patient is doing and if i'm there at six then i didn't go check on my patient before and actually having to how did they sleep and everything like that so maybe yeah. like quarter to six i'm already but that is the only rotation that needs you to do that early other rotations like when i was on peds you need to get there at eight uh to start rotations i mean to start ward rounds where you go so what happens is you go in hospital and certain days new patients come in you get a patient patient or maybe two or three patients and you need to make sure that they're fine you need to find out if they're sleeping are they in pain you need to check on them if they have wounds are the wounds healing so what runs, the doctors, they come at eight and they want us to tell them like about all the patients while we go with the doctor to look at the patients. So I need to be there before eight so that I can go see my patients. And then when the doctor gets there, then we go around the entire hospital looking at the patients that uh, need to be seen. So that can be very lengthy. Um, so get a break at 12 to go get food or sometimes at one. Um and then go back to hospital some days. Some days we don't have to, or maybe we need to go to skills lab. But basically my day, like around four, I'm done. But today I was actually done a bit early, which was nice. A very unexpected, it, timetable just changed last night and then we had a new timetable for today, which, yeah. And then at four, usually I come back and take a nap or come back and eat. And then after two hours later at six, you must resume to the studies. Study um, until like eight, get, eat quickly, then from nine to 11, usually I'll study and then sleep past 11. Yeah. That's a normal day, but sometimes I'm up. It depends if it's close to exams or a, a test, I'm not gonna sleep at 11, uh, maybe sleeping at two because you need to study. Yeah. And, um, but that's different from when I have a module. With a theory module, I need to, like when I'm just studying by myself to write e exams, I don't have to go to hospital. I basically like wake up, at maybe even like at nine or 10, and I literally study the whole day, only taking a break to eat until like midnight. Oh. <laughs> and then you start again. Okay. Yo, sounds hectic, sounds hectic. Um, I think the one thing that a lot of students struggle with is procrastination. Um, do you struggle with this? And what's the one tip that maybe you've gotten better in? I'm not going to say you, you don't procrastinate well, if you do. <laughs> when I have a friend, so I'm always like asking a friend, come, let's start. Always get people to study with me. That's an easy way to get me to sit down and actually study. So study groups help a lot. And you don't have to be studying the same thing because my friend is my senior. Like he's doing fifth year, I'm doing fourth year. No, oh, sorry, I didn't realize that it went like. So I um oh and also let me quickly explain. I got in for uh, 
EDP. So this is not actually fourth year, it's fifth year basically with EDP. But now it extended degree course, which just means medicine is going to take me seven years instead of six. So uh, they stopped EDP last year. So now they it's only six years. There's no extended degree. Oh, so you're going to finish then, earlier. Hmm? You're going to finish earlier. Now the new people coming in are going to finish earlier. Oh. <laughs> okay. How unfair. It um, is, which is we're almost done. We're almost done. Um, and then I just wanted to. You spoke about now enjoying surgery. Um, are you still gonna go into peds? What type of like um, specialty are you are you thinking of going into? Did it change when you formed when you first arrived? You know, <laughs> it did. It did. I oh, my goodness, I love kids I love kids I just if I okay this is something that it should not be a secret uh the students will also find that find out about this when they get here there are some certain departments that are very hectic in hospital the people who are just not very nice to people intruding someone else's environment it was not a nice feeling so maybe when I get kids again maybe I'll have a change of heart but currently I was that mm. but also it should not depend on doctors obviously but they really do make your hospital experience. All right. Um, and then what challenges have you faced while working towards your goals academically and how did you overcome these challenges? Okay. Um, oh, child, this is getting a bit personal. Too deep. Uh, <laughs> um so one thing that's also important to remember i think is that because we're students are we not excused from life experiences things are still going to get hectic person person like mm. and so personal relationships are still going to be challenged or challenging and there's still going to be troubles at home and things like that. But also even yeah, with other students or whatever. But I struggled a lot in training. Um, and I had depression and anxiety. And I was told to take a break uh, by a psychiatrist. Because I was seeing both a psychiatrist and a, uh, a psychologist. And I was told to take a break because I was burnt out. I was like, Pop. I did too many things. I told you I did a lot of things in high school. I got you and I tried to do the same thing. I was in leadership. I was in outreaches. I was, and medical school was too demanding for that. And by the time I realized I had been spread so thin. So yes, to get involved, to put up, to know your limits. Mm. And by the time I realized, and then there was like the drama in other aspects of my life and I was not surviving. And yeah, basically, I was told to just take a break because, like, whatever happens, I'm still not going to be able to, like, perform academically because I was already so burnt out. So, balance, that's when I learned how important it is to be balanced, to be balanced and also to be kind to yourself. Being kind to myself and being, and being like, yes. Like, coming back and understanding when you're, like, a year behind already, because I am, you come back and you're already a year behind and then you struggle to forgive yourself I struggled to forgive myself personally because I felt like oh no I'm already left behind now like whatever whatever but then just being like but it's not like there was no reason understanding that I was actually going through a lot I was actually not okay and being kind to yourself is very important and you'll come to Tigerberg the people who are going to come here and they're going to realize that a lot of people come here healthy and live with mental issues and mental health issues and it's very demanding. It's very competitive, not just because of competition, but also because of the amount of time it takes away from you. It yeah. takes a lot of time. And not this point, you can just fall off like that. Yeah. I think, though, um, one thing that uh, we can say is that you're here now, um, inspiring other, <laughs> other people. So you certainly come back with a bang, uh, back into the degree, and um, you've overcome and sort of um, what you've learned as well is going to help the students going in into um, into 
I don't think I've ever had a, a heard of a success story of someone who just went past and then now they're successful. Um, there's always life happens to people. So thank you so much anyway for sharing and opening up that personal space with us as well and for us to know um, such things. And then, um, okay, I just wanna make sure I've covered the questions that were asked by some of the students that were sent. Um, do you really enjoy your course? Do you have fun? Or is it all about meeting the deadlines? Care to share? <laughs> Do I have fun outside with the course? That the course as well. Is there any? <laughs> Do I have fun with the course? Um, it's not about. It's not always about deadlines. I mean, we have a month currently. Currently, it's not always about the the deadlines. We have a the, a huge test at the end of every month, and obviously, like. When you start, you you can still catch up. Like the course allows you to actually do the work, catch up, so that when it gets there, you actually did to study throughout the month the work that will be asked in the in the exams. But if you then like procrastinate a lot, then it's gonna feel like it's just about the deadline. Because like now, okay, like now I'm on on the last week and I have a lot, and it's very easy to not study for the first three weeks because you're like. I can do whatever, I can just party or just chill. Cause no one is actually asking you anything. There's no test, there's no, there's nothing. And then the test is at the end of the rotation, at the end of doing PEDS for a month, then you have a test. Now you're realizing that all these other weeks I was actually supposed to learn. And if you didn't use the time wisely, then you'll feel like, yeah, oh my gosh, too much, it's too much work. But actually if you had just like, just done the work that you're supposed to do at the end, okay, and next. Yeah, cover it. And I, I am I do enjoy it, it, some a lot of it actually. I, it's so cool. I think medicine is cool. Um, you still struggle with patients. You still uh, sometimes you can't get the drip on. You like trying, and they look like me. They don't have visible veins, and you must put oh. something in there. So there's still a struggle here and there. Or then you get to scrub and to get to be in surgery in a very exciting page case. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. You get to do a lot. Mm. Catching babies, like catching babies, delivering oh. babies. As uh, it's it's all very rewarding. Yeah. It can be very um, okay, this is my personal question. Is it like in the movies, Grey's Anatomy? Um, what's the other one? Chicago Med. You know, we just want to know, is it really like, <laughs> like how we see it when we're watching? <laughs> Listen, there's this doctor I call Grey's Anatomy in hospital. Because you know this drama. <laughs> They could do such an easy thing to do, and he's like, Oh, get me that. Get me that. So people like, very unnecessary, <laughs> it can be very slow. And the only part that is almost like that is actually trauma because trauma is very busy, it's, it's, it's full. There's not, there's people in the passages, it's very full. It's actually sad because they like trauma, mostly like interpersonal violence. It's a wife was beaten by the husband, and the husband, after breaking your bones, is bringing the patient to hospital mm -hmm. kids who were shot or like there's gang violence in cape town so you see things like that it's actually things that are a bit heartbreaking and i, I thought i was going to be excited to be in trauma see all the fresh wounds but then we get then it's not fresh wounds it's actually people who are hurt people who are almost dying and it's, mm -hmm. it can be a bit much on your heart if you care about gender-based violence and violence in general if it affects your heart makes you sad it's not going to be a nice week but it's only one week at least Sure, I think doctors need need to have their own psychologists also because they take care of too many people and see a lot. So I think I really understand when it comes to mental care, especially for, for medical students as well, being exposed mm -hmm. to this. Um, okay, I think you, you covered this one. Um, I think there's just a question of how can the students prepare okay, so themselves okay. um, how can they prepare for themselves mentally for 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 medicine for for next year um, when they enter? Is there is there a way maybe you can advise for them? Um, they ease you into 
like the university, they don't just throw in the deep end. You won't go to hospital for the first year. And when you do go um, <clears throat> to visit people's houses with home visits for this uh, other module, you just see people at home, see how um, the illness or the disease um, has affected the person. I went to see a lady who had very big thighs and legs. She is an infantizer. Uh, she, she could not move. She was bedridden. The kids had to take care of her. You're just seeing the home situation before you actually go to see it, what actually happens in hospital. And then in second year, I think you do get like 10 sessions in hospital. So you only go to hospital for 10 on 10 different days. And um, but you, you don't necessarily have to do much. You are being told by the doctor what looks like what, what, must, what do you think is going on based on what you're actually studying because that's when in second year you study this body systems. So they'll ask you also, what do you think about this? What do you think is wrong with the patient? Because you already studied the work, but you yeah. don't have your own faith. It's only 10 times that year. And then in third year, you've already been in hospital so you know a bit more now okay so yeah but also you're more than when you're already a student and you sort of get a bit of experience before um when you're first year and you go home at the end of the year you already have your your, your bank that says mbhb so you can actually go to a clinic near your, like in your neighborhood and just tell them that you want to help your medical student once help for a week they actually will appreciate that then you can get oh. more exposure if you want more exposure and you're already a student at the university you can go to any hospital or any clinic to just say you would actually like to yeah. just for exposure um okay i think we're getting closer to the end but um i just i just want to ask you sort of like a a question in terms of um all the way to like what does she want the world to know about her like what do you want to leave as your legacy on this earth as well um yeah <laughs> is it too big of a question <laughs> sure yeah you know And, and this is a great question. Yeah. <laughs> but um, hmm, it changes. It changes it over time. And uh, I think more than anything, it's just my heart for people mm-hmm. that I actually like really did want to make life a bit, if I could like just a bit easier for people if it's just only making a person smile that day that's all I managed to do then that's fine if it was to help amputate a leg that was going to kill the person because it has sepsis it has an infection then I amputated a leg that they actually did <laughs> but that's not the but if, if that makes someone's life a little bit easier yeah i have, have this idea i don't know but maybe when the guys come next year they'll help me with this uh just like there's ways uh which i feel like as a when i'm a doctor even now as a student they would have more in, um gravity when you're a doctor like maybe like hiking in scribes like get doctors to hike and actually get people to donate because there's a lot of students who are currently in debt and they like only get to register in may or in april and they spend like four to five months without being able to actually access the internet do mm-hmm. things here and you know this is on for so long before they actually just cover the the money and just pay for them so there's things like that like i feel like seeing that and getting out of here then we could actually help pay uh tuition for students are there a lot of bursaries for medicine students i don't know um for nurse bus obviously mm, it's very hard to find a bus for medicine because it's such a long course and also the only people who benefit from this is the government like private companies don't benefit from medicine or doctors I'm saying to the students Petrus Mutsipe Foundation closes their applications in end of September apply before then you'll all get that okay I think they got it they will apply for it thank you so much um 
Are there any more questions from the floor? No more questions. Everyone's happy and they, I think they've learned a lot from um, just the session today and everything that you have shared with us. Um, we'd just like to say thank you. Um, uh, thank you so much for coming on and speaking to us as well. Yes, um, but I was just saying thank you so much as well. Um, yeah, I think success, people think of success as this thing that's very far. Uh, but watching you where you are is, is, is amazing and it's it's where someone would like to be and to them you are successful you know um, so all I can say is keep inspiring people keep um, being the person that you are and just the honesty and the authenticness that you brought today thank you so much